So in this video now we're going to discuss detectors um, eventually in the context of GC, but uh, just an overview first. Detectors, of course, are going to be used um, to give us information about two things. So they're going to detect compounds as they elute from the column. And they can tell us about, of course, the retention time. And that retention time can be used to identify a compound in an experiment. If you already know the retention time of that pure compound that was isolated previously, it can also be used to find the peak area. So assuming that we are operating within something called a linear range, then the area of the peak on the um, detector's plot that is produced through the chromatogram should be proportional to the concentration of the compound. So peak area allows us to determine concentration of that compound after we found its identity using retention time. So these are the two um, big pieces of information that come from a detector. And there are some different uh, qualities that we look for in analyzing um, or deciding what sort of detector is optimal. Um, so the linear range, this is the range of concentration values or analyte concentrations for which peak area is linearly proportional to the solute's concentration. And you'll provide it as a range of X values on the plot that we discuss next, or a range of concentrations. So maybe I'll change that here. Brackets indicate concentration. So the linear range this is going to be the portion of the following curve where we have detection as a function of analyte concentration where we have a constant slope. So it's about this range of X values here. So this detector would only be useful um, in terms of determining concentration from a peak area, if we know for sure that we have the same response type factor or we have the same proportionality constant. Here, the slope is a constant value in that linear range. And generally, if you're trying to accurately determine concentration, you will just neglect anything that is, has curvature uh, or has a non-constant slope. So up here we have a variable slope and that presents the issue of peak area no longer being proportional to concentration or the concentration determination would be inaccurate. So another term um, is the sensitivity. So the sensitivity is the slope of the plot. The detection has some uh, quantitative unit and that detection as it's plotted as a function of concentration gives a slope. If you increase the slope, you have a higher sensitivity. So for example, 
if you had another detector or another analyte, okay, you would expect that this compound or this detector, excuse me, has a higher sensitivity than the one that I drew first because it has a higher rise of overrun or greater slope. And of course, at some point that one would curve off and no longer become, no longer remain linear. And so the linear range for this would be from the beginning to the point where it becomes curved. And then finally, the limit of detection, this is the lowest concentration of solute or analyte that can be accurately quantified. So below the limit of detection, then we cannot rely on the detection value telling us anything accurate about the concentration. So that limit of detection is shown here. Okay, and it would be whatever concentration is on the x-axis. Specifically, it's the lowest concentration on the x-axis that produces a reliable signal. So below that limit of detection, um, simply the detector is not sort of smart enough or savvy enough to be able to detect the analyte of interest compared to other molecules in the background. So this is the lowest concentration where we can rely on the data. That would be whatever X value is here on the X axis. So for more practice uh, with detectors and understanding uh, the different aspects that we look for in choosing the correct detector, uh, you can visit unit two of my analytical course guide at chemguides.com.